mark. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is 10 million. Good question. It's a number, for one thing. It's also a video game. It's, uh, ironically enough, a match three video game. It's probably not irony, actually, come to think of it, but let's not get into a debate. It will take a while, and it will be uninteresting to everybody. It's a match three video game, and the point of it is to run a dungeon about a bazillion times in order to get enough score to leave the tower. How do you do it? Well, you match three. You have a grid, it's got various different tiles on it, you slide them together in order to match at least three, up to five, in order to do damage to fight stuff and open chests and open doors and proceed and gain a bunch of awesome resources which you can then spend on doing stuff. What stuff am I talking about? Well, this dilapidated 8-bit pixelated tower nonsense, Total Biscuit 2013, is... Something that you can unlock with the use of resources. These are rooms which will gain you a wide variety of different things you can do. This is a trainer, for instance. I can train stuff. Yeah, big surprise. This is a blacksmith. I can make weapons here. I can upgrade my existing weapon, weapon material, as well as weapon sharpness, which will change its statistics. What is this? This is my current staff. This is what I use for magic. I can upgrade the gem. As you can see, it is now an opal and pine staff. Very stylish. Smells disgusting. Mostly the varnish. So let's go into the dungeon and show you exactly what's going on here. Now, this game is by a company called 88, and they made this originally on iOS and Android devices, now made its way to PC. Has it changed? Not a sodding bit, <laughs> quite frankly. It has not changed at all. It is exactly the same principle behind it. So... As I'm going through this, please do bear in mind, I'm going to screw this up already, that I'm currently trying to live commentate this while I do it. Now, as you are well aware, if you've watched any of my videos, as part of my rather irritating condition, I have a great deal of difficulty seeing the obvious things which are right in front of me, which also means that doing a match three game while trying to do live commentary, bearing in mind that this match three game, as you can probably see, also involves doing it in real time. That's pretty difficult. Yeah, that, that is pretty difficult. And this is going to be a bad run. I can see it. It happens every now and again. I'm probably not even going to actually be able to make my way through this guy. Well, that sucked. That's the end of it. So you lose when you get pushed off the left-hand side of the screen. When you take damage, you get pushed backwards. You can block that damage by building up shields, something like that. And you fight by connecting these staff tiles as well as these sword tiles. You do two. As you can see there, you're going to do more damage. You go for essentially up to a total of five. You can also use those wild card tiles, which I completely misused that. But there you go. And you fight your way through the dungeon. Eventually, you will come up to a boss at the end, and you'll gain a bunch of loot if you manage to beat it. By loot, I'm talking about resources. You don't actually get equipment drops within dungeons. You only get little consumables, like that one in the corner there. I need a key, I need a key, I need a key, give me a key. There's almost no keys on the entire screen, but I can use that wild card there to do it. I don't want to waste too much time trying to get past that. It is entirely possible, by the way, to be defeated by a chest, because, you know, why not? Anything that pushes you off the side of the screen will beat you. There we go, that was a key. I could have had that way before that. I'm not paying enough attention. And then something like that happens every now and again, which is kind of awesome, but is also one of the real problems that this game has got. So it's reasonably compelling match three gameplay. Very, very simplistic. It involves this sliding mechanic here, as you can see. I could have beaten that with consumables, but hey. And it was designed with touch screens in mind, but it actually works just fine with the mouse. This game is entirely mouse driven. You don't use keyboard for this at all. So just bear that in mind. Oh, wow, I actually have a bad combo there. All right, there we go. That's a good start. Let's get these keys out of the way, which gives me a match four there to take him down. And then we could start working on the swords, splashing him around a little bit. I really, 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 really would appreciate more shields, but I don't currently have any. Nothing that I can match together by the looks of it. No doubt you've spotted something, but it is much, much easier to spectate this than it is to play it while talking. But never mind. There we go. So, I was talking about the main problem, was I not? Yes, I was. And the main problem... Come on, give me some bloody swords. Is that the game is not so much strategic as it is luck-based, for the most part. And the reason I say it's luck-based is because... 
box. One of the best ways to deal with enemies on the screen is to get a giant cascade of tiles. Now, since you don't know what tiles are coming, it is absolutely impossible to plan that. Since it is in real time, there is no way whatsoever that you can spend a great deal of time thinking about your next move. You, you don't have the means to do that. It's absolutely impossible. So when you get these big, huge cascades, as badass it as it actually feels, it also is completely devoid of skill and strategy in every single way. That doesn't mean the game itself is completely devoid of skill. The ability to quickly match three tiles together while not completely panicking and doing stuff in the most efficient order possible based on the resources that you have on screen, that is a skill. That is a legitimate skill. That is totally fine. But, unfortunately, there's a lot of match three games that actually have a degree of strategy to them, and there's also a game that did this concept before, and it did it better, and it went by the name of Puzzle Quest. Puzzle Quest is not in real time, so you don't have the same hectic nature of it, but it does make the game way deeper and more strategic, which I feel gives the game more longevity and more replayability. The main problem with this game is that it is essentially doing the same thing over and over and over again. There are not really all that many options. You upgrade your equipment, and really the interest in the game is based on your progression more so than anything else, rather than the introduction of new skills you can use and things like that. Since everything's a passive, you don't really have much of a choice in the matter, aside from choosing what you wish to spend your money on in order to upgrade. Now, as you can see, I've run a dungeon a few times there, which means I've got a bunch of resources up to the top there. No low gold, but I have enough resources to mess around with something else. I've got some experience, so I could grab that. As you can see, I'm almost done with this, so I can then upgrade my trainer to the next level if I wish. I don't think there's anywhere else I can unlock at my current skill level. No, I need to be Dungeon Crawler, and then Scout is the last one there, so... I don't think that's going to help me too much. And I have a feeling this is just... Yeah, that is just cash. So, not so great. Alright. And then you go back in the dungeon, and that's it. You know, that that's the game in a nutshell. Eventually, you will unlock a different rank, which will allow you to run a different dungeon. I mean, I say different, really, just in the sense of the monsters that you're going to be encountering, encountering and at what rate you encounter them, as well as the multipliers that are applied to you. There you go, you can have some poison and some wonderful things like that. And th that's kind of the gist of it. Now... Is, this, is that a bad thing? Uh, is the simplicity of the game a bad thing? Not necessarily, because it isn't actually a very expensive game, and it's not really branded as something that you're going to spend hundreds of hours in. It's more like it's a time waster, yeah? There's an entire genre of these bloody things on iOS called cow clickers. They don't require any skill, but they're still satisfying to mess around in for a while. They're designed for wasting time, and the only real effort required is the manual effort of clicking a button. And yet, a lot of people find them rewarding. Now, I'm personally, of course, not one of those, because I you know, guess I was brought up on real games, but quite frankly, there is a significant market of people that are very much into that kind of stuff. And this game doesn't fall into that category, but it is certainly a time waster nonetheless due to the low skill ceiling that the game actually offers. It is okay for a game to offer a low skill ceiling, especially if it happens to be a single-player game that currently costs about $4, or your regional equivalent, which I believe is €4 Euros or £3.39. It's currently 20% off on Steam. It will be 5 bucks in total. I mean, that's okay. It's a good way to while away a few hours, and you don't necessarily need games to engage you for hundreds of hours in order to be good value, especially if they cost next to nothing. Just try and push myself forward a little bit using these items. I, I figure I'm kind of screwed here. Oh, no, maybe not. Probably will be in a minute. Oh, we're going to be fighting the dragon in a second. That means I'm absolutely boned. There's no way in a million years I'm going get, to be getting past him, I don't think. We shall eat some food just to try and stay ahead. Unless, of course, I get one of those really, really lucky cascades. But no, I, I am shut down by the dragon. It happens. So I don't feel that that's a bad thing, but... I would say that the game definitely lacks depth. Now, if you want someone else's assessment of it, then you want to listen to what Jen has to say, my wife. Currently, she's on a plane from South Korea, so you're not going to be hearing that, but I can tell you 
because she told me very specifically what she felt about the game is that in the first few hours she was definitely very entertained and then as she progressed through the game she eventually beat it I might add she got to the point of realizing that actually there really is no strategy involved whatsoever and it really doesn't actually matter what you match up at all you shouldn't really be spending a lot of time looking for that. The only thing you should be doing is spending a lot of time looking for a tile that you can match. It doesn't even matter what. And the reason is because every time you match a tile, you essentially have a chance of the whole thing cascading into a multiple storm of tiley justice and just destroying everything in your path. And that doesn't involve any skill and because you can't really plan what kind of tiles are going to be coming down in any real way. So just match whatever you can see and do so as quickly as you can and that is the most efficient way of beating every dungeon in the game and she beat the game doing that and i found that she was way more efficient at it than i was just simply by throwing as many of these things together as humanly possible so that's a bit of a problem i feel People are going to start off trying to play this strategically and then they're going to realize that most likely the most efficient way of playing it is actually not strategically at all and just to, as fast as possible, match as much stuff as they can find. I mean, hell, you can even do it just by kind of rolling stuff down. I'm not even looking right now. I'm just sort of rolling them down the general direction. It's definitely not the quickest and most efficient way of doing it by any stretch of the imagination, but every time I do it, I get a chance that there'll be some giant cascade that does a ton of damage and gets me a bunch of bonuses. Now, this can still happen in games like Puzzle Quest, but Puzzle Quest has way, way more methods of actually manipulating the board. Plus, it also happens to be a turn-based game, so you can actually sit around and think about your moves, and you should, considering that you can set up some really, really awesome board-clearing combinations without it being a simple luck-based affair. Yeah, you can still get a big cascade, which is completely luck-based, but you can change the a mass amount of tiles around. You can then remove a huge amount of tiles at once using various spells and abilities, and that allows you to use your brain. This game doesn't really allow you to use your brain at all. What it does have, though, is a pretty compelling piece of match three gameplay that's got a nice level up mechanic and a good progression curve, which is fun to play. For a while, anyway. You know, it's a good way to while away a few hours. And for a few hours, it's actually really compelling. That was my experience on iOS. I was like, wow, this is great. I'm enjoying myself. And then I rapidly sort of figured out that the game was actually more shallow than it was letting on. But that's not necessarily a reason not to try it out, because, as I said, it's not a very expensive game. If you happen to have an iOS or Android device and you want to play it on a mobile, then you should. And the reason you should is because the game is not very expensive there. In fact, it's like half the price that it is here. For some reason, we have to pay the, what I'm calling the PC premium. Why? I don't really know. This is not an improvement over the iOS and Android version in any way. They haven't screwed up the touch controls, which is nice. If they had, then that would have been an absolute nightmare. But it is the same game. There is no additional content that I can tell whatsoever. The options menu is non-existent. There is full screen or a boxy window. Either way, you're going to be seeing borders. You know, if I go back home here, you see... There's borders around the tower. They covered it up with grey when you actually play the game itself and go through the whole match three component stuff. But even then, it's, it's not like they've improved the game for PC, is it? They haven't, actually, at all. So I don't know why we should be paying twice and once it goes off sale three times the price for the same game. <laughs> why? You, you want to explain that to me? I'm pretty sure nobody can. That makes no sense other than just straight up money grubbing. And it's common as well. I mean, one could argue, of course, that the iOS market doesn't really bear those kind of prices and that you've got to sell stuff cheaper because there's just so many games on iOS and most of them are kind of really short, shallow experiences that aren't really consisting of any real depth or value. And you've got to compete against that. And how do you do it? Well, you make your game really, really cheap. Well, you can do that on Steam as well, and you probably sell a ton of it. I mean, if this game had launched at two bucks, the chance are it would be selling way more copies than it currently is, even though it's selling a decent amount. But yeah, that's kind of a side point. As I said, 10 million is a bit of brainless fun with some compelling match three components and an interesting level up mechanic. Some people are going to hate the aesthetic of it. Personally, I mean, I don't really like it. I would have, I would have preferred a cleaner tile set for instance i would have preferred something that just looked a little bit better i don't feel that the 8-bit style actually adds anything i mean what is it it's supposed to evoke nostalgia for what exactly 
This, this doesn't remind me of any game that I can remember. So I don't know why they're doing that. I do like the chip tunes in the background, but admittedly there are only like three of them. So that's unfortunate. But it's a decent time waster. Cost you $4, 4 euros or £3.39. Currently available on Steam. This is 10 million, ladies and gentlemen, by 88 Games. My name is Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time.